ready. So we're going to throw straight over to the stage to get ready for round two with our players. Yeah, I'm so excited to get jumping into round two. We have got a phenomenal match for you. We are going to have Aaron Trailer versus Shoma Hunami. So we've got the 2015 world champion on the stage. Incredible game this one between two absolutely amazing players. We've got Aaron and he will be running the Calyrex Ice Rider, Zashin, Reggie Alecki, Incineroar, Amoongus and Mimikyu. And then we've got Shoma who will be running the Dialga, Zashin, Tornadus, Landorus, Meowstic and Ferrothorn. I think the big thing that I like from Shoma's team that's going to give Aaron a lot of issues is that Ferrothorn. Well, here we go, Pokemon trainers. It is going to be the Dialga and the Landorus out on the battlefield for Shoma against the Mimikyu and the Incineroar for Aaron. Yeah, we've got the Dialga, another Pokemon that we haven't mm -hmm. seen. Doesn't get used too much. Really nice option here for Shoma and coming out, obviously, with that Landorus. Now, is there a combination here? Maybe a weakness policy on the Dialga? You're pairing it with the Landorus theory in here for mm -hmm. potentially a fast Bulldoze activate your weakness policy and yes. then max your Dialga and then start attacking things. This would put a lot of pressure on something like the Mimikyu here to break that disguise and then let Dialga potentially attack into it to prevent the Trick Room going up. You've got to worry, mm -hmm. of course, if you are Shoma about the fake out potentially coming from the Incineroar, but there's also the fact is, do you want to leave your Incineroar in here and potentially fake out into a Max Landorus that's going to just Max Quake into your Incineroar mm -hmm. and do enough damage? But again, you know, there's a lot of things that could happen this turn, um, but we'll see how the game sets up because the, the Mimikyu is pretty safe at this point, I think, with that fake out present. Yeah, I mean, Mimikyu is looking in a great position. Good for Aaron to switch out that Incineroar. It can intimidate later on. It doesn't have to worry about any ground type attacks from either of these Pokemon. But Dialga's going to go, first of all, with the Power Gem, connecting into that Amoongus. So a good switch in there for Aaron. As Earthquake is revealed, Telepathy going to be able to protect the Dialga from this powerful ground type attack that will connect on both of Aaron's Pokemon. You know, Amoongus switching in, taking so much damage to protect that opposing, the Incineroar that was there. And Mimikyu will be having its disguise busted as well. It does allow Aaron, however, to get the free Trick Room up here. So now the speed is in Aaron's favor. You've got that Amoongus. It can go for something like a Spore and put these two heavy hitters asleep. Yeah, they're both right now by that Spore and the Amoongus, but we do find a bit more information out now with that mm. telepathy being revealed on the Dialga, so the weakness policy not really an option, and the life all being revealed there. But both Pokemon and Shoma side of the field are threatened heavily from the mm -hmm. Amoongus, so it's a good time to potentially get the Ferrothorn on the field if you do have it in the back of your Shoma, because it's immune to that Spore, and the Mimikyu doesn't really offer too much of a threat offensively, so it's just about which Pokemon do you want to switch out and which one do you want to keep. Uh, a lot of physical threats on Aaron's side of the field, so maybe we see the Landorus preserved for later, so that Intimidate can be cycled later on this game if needed. And Dialga could potentially protect if it's got access to it. It would make sense with the Life Orb, but we'll have to see as we do see <laughs> that Ferrothorn hit the field. Yeah, and this is the perfect opportunity to bring it in. When Spore was going into that slot, so Ferrothorn, thanks to its grass typing, not going to be affected by it. Dialga will, however, have to take this taunt from the opposing Mimikyu. So just making sure it can't go for any status moves, potentially go for a reverse trick room or something like that, but instead going to be able to pick up the KO on that Amoongus. And that's really unfortunate for Aaron. You want your Amoongus as healthy as can be on the battlefield. And we saw the life will reveal, of course, on that Dialga as well. So it's going to chip away at itself. And this Mimikyu, you know, relatively in a position where it's not doing too much. No, it's not doing a lot against these two steel types and very threatened this next mm. turn. You've got the, 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 the Calyrex Ice Rider coming in now, um, and, but not in a massively favorable position. The Trick Room's up, obviously, mm -hmm. but the Ferrothorn going to be the slowest thing on the field. Can it get potentially an Iron Defense off, or is it just going to go for potentially it might have a steel type attack that could hit into the Calyrex? Obviously, doing so, you've got to be a little bit aware that potentially could be a weakness policy on that Calyrex on Aaron's side yes. of the field. So you've got to be a bit careful about what you attack into it with mm -hmm. and then have that conviction to make sure when you are attacking into it, if you do suspect a weakness policy, that you've got enough to take it down to not get punished by kind of just leaving it with a tiny bit of health. I mean, you may not be able to avoid the weakness policy. You know, Calyrex Ice Rider next to Mimikyu is a classic combination for a side shadow sneak here to be able to activate that weakness policy. So it could be that you maybe just try and want to capitalize, you know, if the weakness policy is going up anyway, let's just try and deal some damage against it. And it is a prime position for Aaron to be able to Dynamax that Calyrex Ice Rider as well to get the additional HP needed to survive any damage dealing attacks and obviously take a little bit of reduced damage from something like a side shadow sneak.
The Lander is coming in here, nice to throw down that Intimidate, but if something like a weakness policy is going to go off, but it's not, it's going to be the White Herb. So good information here for Shoma to have. That Intimidate is not going to be valid on the Ice Rider, and it's now in a position where if it wants to go for any kind of Ice move, that Landorus is going to be in a dangerous spot. Yeah, very dangerous spot, it's particularly if Aaron kind of calls this this mm. switch here to the Landorus to get the Intimidate, especially because the, the Dialga is such a prime target for a Max Quake. You could maybe suspect that, um, but we'll see what Aaron decides to go for. The Landorus could be in a little tricky position, but this is huge for Shoma here, getting mm -hmm. that iron defense off and starting the ball rolling with the, the, the Ferrothorn here. Got to be a bit careful about the taunt coming out from the Mimikyu, of course, if it is left alone this Ooh, turn. Oh, it does catch the Landorus with the Max Hailstorm. It's going to be a solid one-hit KO against that Landorus, and it is gone from the battlefield here. You know, switching in, revealing the item on Aaron's side, and yes, just sending up the hail, but I mean, what a great KO there for Aaron. It is at the expense, though, like you mentioned, that Farathorn. It's going to be able to get the iron defense up, but Calyrex is going to try and negate that with its chilling nay ability, boosting up its attack by one stage as Mimikyu does go for that will o -Wisp and connects. Yeah, that's a huge play from Aaron. Really good call there. Calling the lander a switch yes. in and making sure <laughs> that you punish it. Even if the dial gets set on the field, you get good damage off. But the fact is that the, that Intimidate came in from Shoma's side mm -hmm. and then it was negated by the White Herb and then the Chilling Nay ability. Because of that knockout activated, giving you the plus one soul, the Calyrex now sitting in, in a phenomenal position mm -hmm. for Aaron. It's still threatened a bit from the from the Ferrothorn. It has set up its one iron defense. So if it gets another one off, it does become even more increasingly difficult to deal with, but mm -hmm. we still don't know the options on that Incinero from our side of the field. Doesn't always have to rely on physical uh, fire type attacks. It might have Who a knows? special fire type attack. Who knows? Something like Burning Jealousy, which can get around those defense boosts. So mm -hmm. it, Aaron has decided to go for the Dynamax here, so he's going to have to make the most of these turns as we see the Zashi now hit the field. Probably not the thing you wanted to see come in, but mm. again, you're in that perfect position where you've got Will-O-Wisp, you're in a trick room, you have slower than the threats on, on well, with the Zashi anyway, the Ferrothorn's gonna be slower, but yeah, it's um, it's not a too bad a position for Aaron right now to deal with something like the Zashi, and it's Shoma's real idea now is to try and stall these trick room turns mm -hmm. out and make the most of having that Ferrothorn active on the field. Well, there are two more turns of this Trick Room, and you could see Shomo really taking his time on which Pokemon to bring in from the back there and going for the Zashin. I think you need to stall out this Trick Room, so possibly with something like a Protect on that Zashin, you're going to be in a good position to do so. And yes, something like a Behemoth Blade is going to be able to do so much to something like the Calyrex, but Calyrex is in the driving seat speed-wise at the moment. You have to worry about a will so I think it's really wise from Shomo here to go for the Protect on this Zashin, just making sure it's not going to get burned. As Leechy comes out from the Ferrothal, now we have seen this time and time again. It gets his defenses up with Iron Defense, and it's now going to just start chipping away at the HP and regaining it from the Elite Seed. <laughs> Even through Protect, the Max Quake does so much into that Zashin, so a wise Protect from Shoma. And the thing I like that Aaron's doing here is not only dealing out some significant damage and really applying a threatening pressure on the Zashin, but getting up these special defense boosts as well. As Mimikyu does go for that taunt, there is going to be no more Iron Defense for that little Ferrothorn. Yeah, that's a huge play for Aaron, and he's doing everything that he can in this really awkward position against the Ferrothorn. He's burnt it and taken the opportunity because Shoma isn't punishing the, the Mimikyu. Aaron's not allowing him to, to be able to kind of punish the Mimikyu mm -hmm. to take it down. Aaron's using the opportunity to, to really utilize it, you know, getting that Will-O-Wisp off and now getting the taunt off. The Ferrothorn's nowhere near as effective. Now the big decision here for Shoma is which, which Pokemon does he allowed to go down. He's got to make a decision which Pokemon is going to be more valuable to him in the end game. Is it going to be the Zashin or is it going to be the Dialga? Either mm -hmm. one coming in on a Max Quake here, which is an easy target from Aaron into that slot, is going to be able to pick up the knockout. You don't have to think about maybe Ally Switch or anything like that on Shoma's mm -hmm. other field. So you've got to make a decision and probably why he's taking his time, you know, about his turns. He's thinking, do I bring in the Dialga and let that go down? It's full health. Probably we'll see the Zashin go down here because then you do have that full health Dialga to come in. But see how it plays out. Well, I like this. Aaron making the switch to bring in the Incineroar. That's going to throw the Intimidate down and reduce the Intrepid Soul boost on the opposing Zashin. So it's going to be back down in neutral so that if Shoma does want to stay in with the Zashin, um, it does, you know, weaken the offensive pressure that it has. As the Ferrothorn does go for Body Press, going to do minimal damage onto that opposing Calyrex. And that Calyrex does go for this Max Quake. So finding its mark down onto the opposing Zashin. Unfortunately, the restricted Pokemon will be KO'd, leaving Shoma with just the Dialga and the Ferrothorn left as Trick Room ends at the end of this turn. Yeah, and... Um I think because the Zashin had taken so much damage from that previous turn, mm -hmm. you're, you're kind of in a, in a position where you, you think, well, cut my losses, I've probably got a better chance with the Dialga coming in now to be my max Pokemon. It's got the Life Orb as well, so it will hit extremely hard. 
Um, and then the, the, the Incineroar is kind of in that position where do I go for a parting shot mm -hmm. or do I go for a fake out into the Ferrothorn and take a little bit of residual damage but stop the Ferrothorn. But honestly, the Ferrothorn's not really posing too much of a threat right now, I don't feel. Um, potentially because it can body press, it will do a decent amount of damage, but we do, it's not, doing, it's not mm -hmm. doing enough damage to the car X from showing us out of the field. Yeah, I think you're right. The Ferrothorn's the difficult thing for Aaron now because Diogo's going to come back in, and we've seen Aaron get plus two special defense on that Calyrex now, thanks to the Max Quake. So it can kind of not worry as much about that Diogo, but the issue is going to be that Ferrothorn. You need to make sure you're using the taunt turns on it so that it doesn't go for a nuller iron defense and then be really difficult to deal with with your physical attackers. So possibly, you know, Aaron could double up into that Ferrothorn. We know thanks to the Taunt it can't protect anyway. Um, and then try and deal with the Dialga a little bit later on. Yeah, you've kind of got like a bit of a situation here where the kind of you feel like Shoma's win condition is, is the Ferrothorn, right? Mm -hmm. But then Aaron's win condition against that is Mimikyu because the, the Ferrothorn can't really damage that if it is relying solely on that body press. Its only way to damage it is through the, the Leech Seed. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you've got the Mimikyu out in front of the, the Ferrothorn, which it can't hit, then you've got the Taunt as well to stop that Leech Seed. So it's a, it's a very difficult end game situation, but I think that's probably what you want to try and aim for if you are in the worst case scenario. Um, but now you, you, the, the big thing, the immediate threat is going to be this Dynamax from the dial that we're going to see this turn from Shoma's side of the field. And I love this a late game Dynamax, not something you see all the time. And it's nice to have from Shoma's perspective here to be able to have this sort of up his sleeve towards the end game of this game one. You know, you're, you've got two, po two Pokemon down, but you still have a big Dynamax Pokemon to go and something like a Max Quake or even something like Max Steel Spike is going to deal big, big damage into that opposing um, Calyrex. And that's exactly what we're going to see. The Max Steel Spike comes down, connects into that opposing Calyrex. We'll be able to pick up the KO against it. That was so much damage, Lee. Huge damage, huge knockout, taking that Calyrex right out of mm -hmm. the equation and the defense boost as well, because that is massive. When the Ferrothorn right now is locked with that, that mm -hmm. taunt, it can't go for its own iron defenses. It has to rely on these defense boosts now from the Dialga, which are available through the Steel Spike. And a super effective attack like a Flare Blitz coming out, it does nowhere near enough damage now. Yeah, I mean, still a significant chunk, but not what we're used to. And Ferrothorn able to go for the body press and capitalize on these defense boosts and pick up the KO against the opposing Incineroar. In one turn there, Shomas just have fantastic synergy, boosting up the defenses, picking up a KO left, right, and center. Fantastic play by Shoma. Yeah, the critical hit there, probably just sealing it there <laughs> for Incineroar. Really unfortunate for Aaron, but Shoma is really making the most out of these Dynamax turns with his Dialga and the combination of that mm -hmm. defense boost on top of the already iron defense to really utilize that body press super effective into Incineroar and leaving the poor Mimikyu to come in again. Probably it's a worse situation against two Steel types, which you can't really do too much of. You can think a max Steel Spike is going to be enough to close this one up for Shoma. And little Mimikyu is going to come in and face down against these two powerhouses of Steel. And unfortunately, there's not a lot that Mimikyu is going to be able to do here. I think a max Steel Spike, particularly if the Disguise is busted, is just going to be able to pick up another KO against Mimikyu. If not this turn, certainly the next. Yeah, and it's, it, you know, the momentum swing here for Shoma just kind of holding out until you, you, you felt at the time where the, you know, the Ferrothorn's taunted, there's not really much you can do. It feels a little bit threatened with the Incineroar on the field, but the momentum swing as soon mm -hmm. as that Dialga goes for that Dynamax, and you can see the sheer power that it's got with that uh, that, that boost from the, the Life Orb. which just, mm -hmm. uh, you know, non-Dynamax Pokemon cannot deal with that power because of how good and strong it is on its, its special attacking side. Exactly, and we're going to see the forfeit locked in by Aaron here. So Shoma is going to be able to take game one in the Swiss round two set at the Pokemon VGC World Championships 2022. I mean, this is the thing with Trick Room, right? You're dancing with our hands tied when we're in this situation, okay? Because when you've got Trick Room up, you're in a really strong position. You're commanding things. But then as soon as Trick Room is over, you're really pinned down into a difficult situation and you lose that speed, momentum, and advantage. And Shoma was able to capitalize on that perfectly. It's going to be interesting to see how our players have adapted coming into this game too. Well, Aaron's going to be bringing that Amoongus, you'll be happy to see it leave. Paired up straight away with the Calyrex Ice Rider. Trick Room is going to be asserted by Aaron in this game. But on the opposing side for Shoma, it's that Landorus and the Dialga once again. At least this time, Amoongus could go for some redirection. Yeah, it has got that redirection option here with the Rage Powder. But at the same time, you're going for that. You're going to take a lot of damage from the Dialga. And you're also potentially allowing... Uh, the dial gets to get those defense boosts mm -hmm. straight away. You could make the same play again, where you go for switch out the Landorus here into the Ferrothorn. Ooh. But the, the problem is, like we've already identified and, and, and just chatting between the games, is that the Amoongus now on Aaron's side might be 
more inclined to go for a spore into that Dialga <laughs> slot here to stop it, maybe protect um, your, your, your Calyrex as well this turn rather than attacking with it. Uh, it might be an option rather than delay that, that Dynamax here. Um, or the other option is you just Rage Powder and Trick Room to, uh, to allow the Calyrex to uh, get the speed control onto the field. I think you make a good point, Lee. Like, if you're Aaron, when do you unleash this Trick Room? Do you do it straight away with that Rage Powder? Or do you maybe bide your time a little bit more and use Amoongus to set up the ball position in a better way by putting some of Shoma's Pokemon to sleep? But straight away, it's going to be all action here in this game too, as we're going to see a Dynamax come up on Shoma's side. And it is indeed going to be that Dialga once again. So we're going to be able to apply a lot of pressure with the Max Steel Spike or Max Quakes and just start, you know, building up the defensive capabilities on Shoma's side, particularly when it's next to that lander as they can go for those earthquakes. Even if it's not dealing super effective damage, it's dealing big damage nonetheless. Dialga moving first with the Max Steel Spike. Gonna go down into the Amoongus. I didn't see a Rage Powder come out here, so it's just targeting straight down into that little mushroom, knowing that it could cause so much issue and disruption for Shoma. And the Earthquake now following up from that lander is it's a really smart play from Shoma to make sure, you know, you're identifying that the Amoongus is the threat here. And a huge critical hit onto the Calyrex, really unfortunate here for Aaron. Yeah, picks up the KO against that Amoongus as Calyrex doesn't even trick room, just goes for the Glacial Lance and removes that Landorus once again in a clean one-hit KO. But look at the damage it suffered thanks to that Earthquake. It is going to get its Chilling Nade boost, but there is no trick room on the field, so it's got to watch out, particularly as it's not in its Dynamax form. And Dialga is, even if Calyrex wants to protect, something like a Max Steel Spike could even pick up the KO through that Protect. I think even if it, ma it goes for the, the, the Dynamax this next turn, I think it's probably taken mm. so much damage from that really unfortunate critical hit mm. that it's probably going to get knocked out from the Dialga the next turn. And now we've seen as well, Shoma really focusing all of his energy down onto that Amoongus, thinking, mm -hmm. I don't really mind what the Calyrex does here because I'm going to get the defense boost anyway. I've yes. already landed my Intimidate, activated that White Herb. All I need to do is get rid of the Amoongus and that is my key to it to win in this one and now we are seeing the Zashin hit the field which is another Pokemon that isn't really that great for to sit in front of something mm -hmm. like Calyrex. Exactly, and I was going to say, if this is the opportunity for Aaron to bring us something like that Mimikyu, then it's going to be in such a dangerous position. But I think, why is he bringing in the Regieleki? Because a combination of, you know, Behemoth Blade and Max Steel Spike into that Mimikyu will be able to stop Trick Room entirely. But Regieleki poses a slightly different problem. You know, it could easily go for the Dynamax here, do something like devastating damage or something like a Max Lightning as well. But the issue with Regieleki is, yes, it can hit really hard, but it can't always take a lot of damage. No, it, it definitely cannot take any damage at all. You've got to really, I think if you are RNG, you've got to, if you, if you are confident, max it and mm -hmm. potentially try and take out that Zash and it's at least one threat gone, but then you're committing to a Dynamax on uh, your Regieleki in front of um, a Dynamax Dialga that mm -hmm. has access to Max Quick, which is not really the situation you want to find yourself in. We are going to see a Dynamax here from Aaron's side of the field, but which Pokemon will it be? You were right, Lou. It <laughs> is that little Regieleki. Not so little anymore. Yeah, definitely not. And Regieleki is here to play, have fun, and be bouncy in the venue here. But of course, it's got a difficult battle for its trainer here. It can take huge damage from both of these Pokemon. Something like a Max Quake is just going to be able to do so much into that opposing Regieleki. I like the protective from Zacian, just protecting yourself from the Max Lightning, from the speedier Regieleki that was indeed going down into the slot. So dealing minimal damage and leaving itself really exposed to something like a Max Quake from this opposing Dialga. You know, we don't know the item on this Regieleki yet. Maybe that could, you know, help it out a little bit. But being able to have that big damage, there we go, Life Orb. So it's not even Focus Sash here. It's going to go down to something like a Max Quake. And that's exactly what we see Shoma going for. And it will be able to pick up oh. the KO. Aaron just not able to utilize Dynamax at all. I think it's just held on, Lou. Did I it? Think, yeah, I think it's just, just <gasps> barely held on. I, oh. No, it hasn't. Oh. Wishful thinking, wishful thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> Nearly. I mean, I do love Regieleki, but even Regieleki can't stand a Life Orb Dialga. No. Glacial Lance, you can see coming out from the Calyrex as well, to no avail into that Zacian, but does do a significant chunk, thanks to his Chilling Nade boost as well, into that opposing Dialga, but it's not nearly enough to stop it in its tracks. No, and it's, it's not looking great for Aaron right now. He's kind of, his hand was forced there, and to, to, to max the Regieleki, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you look, he has brought the Zash into this match, so his really only options were the, the Calyrex. But because of that critical hit, taking so much damage, you can't really afford to max it at this point. Um, so you, you have to go for the Regieleki, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Even though I tried to, to build the tension <laughs> there, 
it didn't it didn't take the max quake unfortunately dial go with the life orb we've already mentioned how strong it is it's just too it is too powerful mm -hmm. and and now it's in a great position it's got the special defense boost it's got the defense boost and you're sitting in a, a great position to either pick up the knockout on whichever the calyrex or zashin you choose yeah, that's the thing. I mean, the Dialga in a little, its HP has been dwindled a little bit. Something from that Zashin could deal significant chunks to it. But I think the issue is that Shoma has such a strong Pokemon advantage now as well. The Zacian is able to go for some big damage. So it's wise for Aaron, I think, to protect that Calyrex because it's really null and void. There's no Trick Room on the field. So both of Shoma's Pokemon can target it down. Sacred Sword isn't going to be enough to pick up the KO against it. Six HP remaining, allowing the Zacian to go for a Behemoth Blade. But of course, into the protect of that Calyrex is going to be able to survive out the turn. And this Dialga, once again, going for these max quakes such a good time move to have against a lot of Aaron's team and it picks up the one hit KO against it I mean you've got the Zacian you've got the Incineroar you've got the Reggie Alecki these are all Pokemon that don't want to take a max quake Dialga is having an absolute field day out here yeah and it's gonna it's gonna faint now to the mm -hmm. recoil from the life orb but I think it's put in its work <laughs> it has the return that you've got from it it's knocked out the Reggie Alecki it's knocked out the Zacian two of the biggest threats mm -hmm. on Aaron's side of the field and and you can't really ask for much more there and now it's the Calyrex versus Ashen and you know the, the Parathorn it's not looking mm. too good for Aaron here unfortunately he wasn't able to get that trick room up and Shoma really just exploiting the weaknesses that, that Aaron has on his team and um, really executing the plan so well here I mean, what a phenomenal game to you from Shoma, who will be able to take this set 2-0 with that fantastic Dialga. Huge congratulations and commiserations to Aaron as well. I mean, I really felt for him in that game, but Shoma just showing exactly why he is a world champion from 2015 and is staking his claim to try and take the world champion title in 2022. Yeah.